thing that really makes me wild is the use of animals as if they were inanimate objects. The use of animals as if they were boots or electric light bulbs. We'll use these animals and throw them away. Send me 50 rabbits on Monday morning. I've got to test the hairspray. When they're all blind, we can throw them away. I cannot actually point to an evil consequence, for the rabbits have no power. But I feel in my bones that God is not mocked. Uh, God, or whatever you like to think of as God, the, the, the power that created this world, also created the animals that we exploit and ill-treat. And I feel that something is likely to come of this, unless very soon there is a new look at the thing. Animals should not be treated as things. Now this is uh, in 1982 in this country, in the in factory farms and in vivisection laboratories, animals have no rights. I'm feeding her the 1876 Cruelty to Animals Act because that's about all you can do with this particular act. It gives them no protection. Because of this act, this goat was blinded. We have no idea what the experiment was. It's classed in amongst the government statistics in the same way that many other experiments. It's not just goats that are blinded under this act. There are cats, there are kittens, there are monkeys. Large numbers of animals are blinded under this very act. When we see what scientists are prepared to do to them in repetitive experiments every day of the, the week, it's, it's something which you'll do anything to try and stop. Every six seconds, an animal dies in a British laboratory in this country. The suffering of animals in laboratories is well known. The failure of official bodies to stop that suffering is also well known. It was not to be expected that a nation of animal lovers could bottle up their emotions forever. A smouldering anger is moving in some quarters towards direct action. Some called it the world's largest animal rights demonstration. In April this year, thousand on thousand walked from Salisbury to Porton Down to protest against the work of the government's research establishment and its director, Rex Watson. If the police thought that the marchers would be content with a bit of rent and chanting and effigy burning, they were wrong.
Most of the protesters would listen to the speeches in an orderly way and then disperse. But a militant wing was for action. Protesters breached the outer perimeter fence and poured through the gap. Fifteen hundred or so rampaged over Porton Down, through inner fences and up to the very doors of the laboratories, where they were checked by police held in reserve. There were 29 arrests. Porton showed again that up and down the country there are now small cells of animal liberators who are prepared, if necessary, to break the law. Club Row in London's East End was where animals for vivisection could be bought off the street. For over two years now, it's been the scene of bitter confrontation between dealers and demonstrators. Not yet, no. <laughs> I'm so glad to see you here, and I'm... Why are you going to go, believe you me? But somebody's kept them off, and they kept a lot of animals still away. Did I see a policeman struggling with somebody? Yes, one of our people that was having to go again. <laughs> again. The animals have no rights at law. There's nobody to see that their, uh, their rights are respected. Indeed, they have none. They're treated entirely as if they were inanimate objects. And this I feel to be wrong in principle and to make nonsense of any idea that the world works on ethical principles. It doesn't. What has democracy done for laboratory animals? Lodge Moor, animal holding house for Sheffield University. Lodge Moor was raided by animal liberators two years ago. Four dogs were taken away. One of these was later reunited with its owner. This is certainly a holding center where animals are held before they are taken to the uh, main departments, the main medical departments of Sheffield University, uh, there to be used uh, for experiments. And we believe that we should, as members of the public, have access to this place in order that we can check up to see whether these animals have or have not been stolen. We have some people with us who have had their animals stolen and would like the opportunity to identify them. Well, this is Bluffy here. He was, he's been reunited. He was taken out of this place by the Northern Animal Liberation League in October 1980. And uh, this was the photograph of the reunion with Blackie, with his rightful owners, Mr. and Mrs. Hallam at Ashbourne in Derbyshire. I took that photograph of the reunion, and Mrs. Hallam broke down and wept. She, she recognised her dog from 20 yards. Well, of course, you would recognise your own dog, even if it would be a year later. You'd still recognise your own pet. I know I would. The universities are concerned chiefly with secrecy because the majority of the public are uh, opposed to experiments on anim animals, particularly cruel experiments, and I think they are inclined to take animals without asking any questions. It's rather like going back to body snatching in the last century. Exactly. To buy a dog 
A bread like a beagle, especially bread for the section, can cost anything up to about 200 pounds. And therefore, it's much cheaper to use uh, larger dogs for the section that are snatched off the street. Obviously, somebody's organizing the posters. I've had three cats stolen, and I'd like to know who's got them. And I can't find out. And the police are apathetic. They don't care. Unfortunately, unfortunately, young lady, cats are not regarded as property. Oh, but I know. I appreciate your, I appreciate your... I don't know what's happened to my cat. I have no idea that they've been taken for the pelt. And I have every sympathy with you. We've come in a reasonable manner. There's no way in which they will allow you access. I know it is. Well, but the... If the university people were decent people, they'd be only too anxious to give it access. This is what we're here for. We're here because... And we're always looking after these animals, then. There's nobody in the building, is there? I mean, you can see the place is locked. If there's nobody here, then can we pretend to the police? And if there's nobody looking after those animals, can I put a formal protest? Because somebody should be looking after this. Have you spoken to the ISPCA? Oh, yes, we have. The residents of this area are absolutely sick and tired of what goes on here. People are actually, they're dreadfully. Well, but we want to just verify whether our animal is in there that's been stolen. No, 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 what you will have to do, you will have to make representations to the proper people. <laughs> but we have and to. We you know the constant and they ignore pets. Us. And what have you done? They ignore care. us all the time. He's a creature of habit. He had his food every day, had his, did the same things every day, and suddenly he wasn't there anymore. And he, he was a lovely cat, and he just went. That happened so much. Some children were out there uh, playing, and they told me that they'd seen somebody come along with a bit of rope, put it round the dog, and just put it into a van and drive it off. So anyone who leaves their pets out at night must be mad, because I wouldn't anymore. The police seem to be so busy with other work that uh, they don't really pay much attention to it. I want a better world, and I don't like what I see around me, be it for the human race or for the non-human race. I don't like what's going on around me, and I'm just protesting and trying to do what I can. And I'll tell you this, if my dog's in there, that dog will come out with me. No force on earth or a police force or whatever will stop me bringing my dog out. Gosh, is it so good? Finally, after three hours, a small delegation was allowed in. There was plenty of evidence of the scale of experiments carried out by Sheffield University. The director of the holding house made no attempt to conceal the facts. I think it's about 1500 later. You want some stalk for you then, eh? Well, I mean, there's, you know, there's no secret about the fact that I use for experiments. Yeah. That is a fact. In other words, these are being uh, boarded for people on holidays. That yeah. Oh,
the protesters found no evidence of stolen pets at Lodge Moor on this visit. It's not just the abuse of animals in laboratories that incenses the protesters. It's the abuse of animals in factory farms as well. Well, I think it's, it's true that some animals appeal to people more than others do. Um, puppies and uh, young seals and um, young rabbits and so on do appeal to people. It's often been said by psychologists like myself that it's the animals with the round heads and the big round eyes who appeal. But just as with human beings, the unattractive individuals, the unattractive or the less attractive species, like perhaps chickens, uh, also deserve our consideration and respect because um, all the evidence is, and there's more and more scientific evidence to support this, that uh, they too suffer in the same sort of way that we do. They've got nervous systems the same as ours or similar to ours. They've got a chemical associated with the transmission of pain, uh, exactly the same as ours. And uh, there's more and more evidence to support the common sense view that these animals, whether or not they're attractive to look at, can suffer in the same sort of way that we do. <laughs> the battery system has come in over the last 30 years or so and now um, the vast majority of chickens in this country, laying chickens, are kept in battery cages, which means that you have three or four chickens in a very small cage for the whole of their lives. And uh, they can't, uh, they can't uh, stretch their wings, they never see the daylight, they can never scratch in the ground, they just live in this cage in semi-darkness, in the reek of the droppings from uh, 20 or 30,000 others in the same shed and uh, they may be mutilated by having their beaks cut off in some cases. Uh, they very often lose their feathers, they peck each other, many of them die from disease and the conditions in a chicken battery really must be very similar to the conditions or worse in some, than in some of the concentration camps in the war. pretty well three uh, three battery cages which shows that if the birds were allowed to spread their wings inside the cage then the cages would have to be at least six and if not seven times the size that they are. It could be argued that this hen is quite different from those in the cages but I must tell you that it's only two years since this one was set free from a cage. It was just the same as those two years ago. If we let the, if we open the front of these cages, the birds should run out just as though they're kids released from school. But you see, in fact, they don't do that because they've become institutionalized. They've never been used to anything except life in a cage. 
If we take one of them out and put it down, if we actually take them out, which they don't want to come out, and put them down, it's rather difficult for them to, to stand normally or to behave normally as chicken would normally be expected to do. They're quite aggressive. It's quite unusual to have hens as aggressive as this. I think that uh, people who keep chickens in battery cages should uh, be punished by uh, a jail sentence, and then they would appreciate what it means to be imprisoned. Factory farms, in effect, are controlled by very milk and water regulations which are produced by the Ministry of Agriculture, and I think they're totally unsatisfactory, as far as I'm concerned. They're completely unsatisfactory. And you can't expect the Ministry of Agriculture, which is, whose chief concern is the exploitation of animals, to produce regulations which really protect them. We've got a large number of pigs, which I'm particularly concerned about. I think the pig is the most intelligent animal. You know, Winston Churchill described him as our equal. And uh, the pigs are now kept in uh, cubicles and crates so that the sows are effectively imprisoned the whole of their lives. They're uh, repeatedly impregnated and they're then tethered uh, until uh, shortly before the piglets are born and then when shortly before the piglets are born they're put into a, a, a crate which confines them so much they can't even turn around. And they spend their lives as prisoners. I, I think uh, the pigs are the saddest, saddest case of all. Basically, what I want to see is the relief of suffering, the abolition of suffering, the prohibition of suffering in factory farms and in laboratories. Recently, we've uh, been concentrating on factory farming. An example is uh, last December, in the height of winter, in fact, on the day that uh, the Polish, uh, there's the coup d'etat de in Poland, um, 50 members, and suppose the Northern Animal Liberation League, entered the grounds of Bibby Research Institute and Liverpool University uh, Veterinary Outstation. There, the, uh, the about something like a dozen buildings were entered where intensive factory farming conditions were found. Uh, something like nine chickens to a cage, de-beaked on special diets to try and improve the efficiency of factory farming, even more than its horrific state at the moment. Um, there were all types of factory farm animals. Uh, developments now we saw were lambs, lambs being factory farm. Now this is not generally known that lambs are being are next in the queue for factory farming. These were seen in small cages. Geese, ducks, turkeys, calves, pigs, the entire range of farm animals are now, it seems, destined for uh, concentration camps such as factory farms. As the raids have increased, more liberators have been arrested and charged. They've been fined, and suspended prison sentences have been imposed. So far, not many have actually been sent to jail. I was in that prison there, which is um, Stamford Hill Prison uh, on the Isle of Sheppey, for rescuing 125 mice from a laboratory animal supplier. There's a chap who had was breeding mice for Su supply to laboratories where they'd been used, where they would, would have been used for painful experiments. Well, I with ten other people um, were arrested in a cat breeding unit where they breed cats for vivisection um, near Oxford last September. There were a lot of cats in there, rather like sort of factory farming of cats for vivisection. In order to um, distinguish one mouse from another mouse, um, the proprietor of, of the establishment probably thought that the easiest way was to actually 
cut some of their toes off, cut different toes off on, on, on each individual mouse so that one could be uh, distinguished from another. Well, I can't say I'm looking forward to going to court. I mean, I certainly never wanted to be arrested. Um, but I don't regret what I've done. And whatever the outcome, it won't stop me going on. Because I do believe in what I'm fighting for. I mean, animals don't have a voice. We have a voice. We have to speak for them. And if I respect them and care about them, then it's my duty, really. It's my responsibility to do something to help them. I don't actually regard... Um the activities of the uh, Animal Liberation Front as criminal in a moral sense. They may technically be against the law, but if someone, say, had, had uh, rescued somebody from a concentration camp in Nazi Germany, that would have been technically against, against the law of that country. But that doesn't mean to say that uh, it's morally wrong. In fact, nowadays, we regard that as, as very praiseworthy. And I think in the future, people will um, regard the activities of the militant animal rights campaign as, as, as being uh, praiseworthy. I think that if I were 30 years younger, I very probably would be breaking into laboratories. But that would also mean, wouldn't it, that I was 30 years younger. It doesn't mean to say that I necessarily think it right for people 30 years younger than myself to do so. What it does mean is that I can well understand the indignation and the feeling of a need for action on the part of young people. We are not terrorists. We depend on public support for what we do. That means that the public join in with what we do. That's why we have hundreds, not just tens, involved in our operations. Um, the second thing is that after every operation, we write reports about what's happened, what we've seen, and bring the evidence to the public. To pre the precincts in Manchester, we go, set up a stall, and show them the photographs and evidence that we've obtained. Now, in nearly all the cases where people show interest, they support what we do. They say, I'm sorry I can't do the same because of certain commitments, but we support what you do. So with public support, we don't feel that we are terrorists. Unfortunately, uh, we don't seem to make any progress in this country until somebody does something outrageous. I wish it was otherwise. I wish governments would be quicker to respond to public feelings. It's quite clear that the majority uh, uh, of the public in this country are concerned about the way animals are treated, are concerned about the way we treat our wildlife, are concerned about the way in which we treat our laboratory animals, and are more and more concerned about the way in which we treat animals in factory farms. And yet nothing is done about it. Obviously, we're more concerned about our own species, um, but that's partly because our own species can fight back and can vote and can articulate their um, resentment of being mistreated, whereas the non-human animals can't do this. And we, we bully them, we exploit them mercilessly. Man has become a tyrant over the other animals. I used to experiment on white rats, um, but I saw animals um, of all sorts being used in laboratories. Monkeys, cats, dogs, pigeons, um, all sorts of animals that, that, that you wouldn't dream of being used in laboratories are in fact used. Very obscure animals, you know, crocodiles and um, quite amazing species are used. And I was very disturbed about the way I saw um, monkeys, for example, in, in the... Uh, laboratory in Cambridge I worked in, that as soon as they were captured in the jungle, and of course many of them died before they reached this country, um, but those that survived were then put into little cages where they were kept sometimes for months before they were even experimented upon. And the cruelty started right from the moment of capture. And then the imprisonment that these active animals that had been used to swinging around in the jungle trees, they were locked up in little cages the size of suitcases the rest of their lives, and then they're experimented upon. It seemed to me to be absolutely wrong. The worst experiment I ever saw, which I was not, thank goodness, asked to be involved in myself, was in a laboratory in California, where I saw a cat which had had its tail cut off and had been blinded, put inside a rotating drum, which was turned around by an electric motor. And this cat had to walk around inside this drum for nights and days on end in order to, to deprive it of sleep. 
and every 10 hours or so, they'd stop the motor and they'd get the cat out and they'd stick needles into its spine to draw fluid off the brain. And I asked what was the purpose of the experiment and, I, and the students who were doing it, and they were only undergraduates, came out with some completely fatuous, totally inane um, theory that they wanted to test. And I said to the professor, do you think it's right to let uh, uh, students experiment on animals like this? And he said, oh yes, sure, it's good for them to, you know, to develop their, their manual skills, to develop their imagination and so on. And he didn't care a damn about the, the animal or its suffering. And there was this brainwashing going on of the students at the same time. They were being taught that they could mistreat the other animals in any way they, they saw fit. Rather similar experiments go on in Britain. Cats are used in their thousands in laboratories in this country. Uh, sleep deprivation experiments have been performed on animals in this country. And indeed, undergraduate students are allowed to experiment on animals in, in this country under the Act. But, in my opinion, the vast majority of research on animals is useless as far as the human race is concerned. It produces no benefit for mankind. There are a number of important drugs which are very poisonous to non-human animals, to some species, um, like uh, thalidomide, for example, it doesn't produce its awful effects on standard laboratory animals. We're one of the very few species that it affects in that way. Penicillin poisons guinea pigs, and there are a number of other examples. There was another case recently of a drug produced um, called Eraldin, which uh, its, its dangerous effects upon the human species were not to be found in laboratory animals. We're talking about four and a half to five million licensed experiments on animals every year. Uh, and in addition to that, there will be millions of other animals that are also used in laboratories, which are not counted in the official figures. We're talking about those animals that are kept in laboratories for a bit and then uh, discarded uh, because they're not the right sort of animal, they're not healthy or they're the wrong sex or whatever. We're talking about animals that are used for other sorts of experiments which are not licensed. Not all of them are licensed. Uh, they don't have to be. Uh, animals, for example, that are, are used for the production of vaccines are not counted, nor are the animals that are used uh, for the production of cancer cells. You can actually give cancer to an animal in this country, and provided you don't then do a further experiment on it, it doesn't have to be included. So there will be one or two or three million extra animals um, on top of the four and a half or five million that we're talking of. Some people say that there are uh, there are 10 million extra animals involved. Nobody knows is the answer. I feel that very direct action is, is all well overdue and that unless we get together in large numbers and voice our protests very openly, then the situation will continue as it has done for the last 100 years. We have concentrated uh, our attention in Manchester on this uh, medical school because it is a massive vivisection laboratory. Very, one of the biggest medical vivisection laboratories in Europe, for a fact. There are 5,000 animals in this particular building. Now, the most, hor the most bizarre thing we found when we conducted our operation, uh, occupations, our demonstrations, our rooftop entries into the building was, the f was that we found no students aware of what was going on. When we said, uh, why don't you do something about the pigs and the, uh, the beagles and the monkeys and the cats and all the other animals that are housed on the top floor being used for horrific experiments, why don't you protest? And they said, well, there are no animals in this building. In fact, the lift goes up to the third floor and from there you need a special key to enter this secret area. Um, well, last year we uh, we went along on open day. They declared Manchester University declared an open day. The public went marching in up to the third floor, but they were allowed no further. It did now got steel doors on the top floor. The fire escape has been cut away. Uh, barbed wire fencing has been installed on the roof. Uh, extra guards been brought in. 
The same has happened at Babraham, the Agricultural Research Centre at Cambridge. Uh, this is a, a good for us in one way, in that this, the money that would probably be spent on vivisection is being spent on defending that. But it, it is bad, uh, it is harmful in another way, in that there is less chance of getting information out of these establishments. So stronger methods may have to be take place. Oh, oh, oh. Almost every weekend now, somewhere in the country, small groups, mostly young people, are prepared to break the law in guerrilla actions on factory farms, universities, agricultural colleges and laboratories. was intended to protect animals was made law over a hundred years ago when there were only 350 experiments a year. Today there are nearly four and a half million. Eighty percent of these experiments are performed without an anaesthetic. Only one prosecution for cruelty under the act has succeeded in the last 106 years. It may be necessary to experiment on animals, but too many experiments are repetitive and of questionable research value. Most doubt the ethics of killing animals to test weapons, cosmetics, tobacco and alcohol. And a revised act would be welcome which curtailed such experiments and set some limit to the intolerable pain inflicted on animals. <laughs> 